this is a new concept of the creation of the universe. <clears throat> it's called a spin theory of universe creation. The astronomers and astrophysicists have observed the apparent expansion of the universe but are reluctant to accept the fact that the universe will continue to expand. There is something abhorrent about the concept that the universe will continue to expand ad infinitum. Many of us want to think that the universe will contract to its original dimensions and repeat the Big Bang. The evolution of the human race has not been in vain if somehow we are born again with our developed intelligence intact. Hovering over this belief system is an omniscient God who knows what we're going to do next and who can intervene in human affairs. The following concept of the evolution of the universe does not assume the existence of an all-powerful omniscient God but returns to the projected beginning when the universe was compacted to a size smaller than a golf ball in an almost infinite concentration of energy at an almost infinitely high temperature. It's highly probable that the golf ball dubbed by Hawking as the singularity was spinning. We have only to look at the universe to observe that spin is an inherent feature. On the macro scale the galaxies, stars and planets are all spinning and on the micro scale the atomic particles such as electrons and photons are spinning. Spin, angular momentum, is conserved and so it is reasonable to assume that it originated with the primordial singularity. Once we accept this concept, we can derive a different sequence of events from the Big Bang. The latter caused the complete dispersion of the singularity with the condensation of energy into matter in the ultimate form of atoms, stars and galaxies. The universe is envisaged as a balloon with the galaxies at the balloon surface and nothing at the center. In the spin concept the universe was created by the singularity converting some of its high temperature energy into angular momentum, increasing the rate of spin and thus counteracting the enormous gravitational force. Since we do not know the mass equivalent of the contained energy, we cannot calculate the spin rate necessary to counteract the gravitational force. With a tentative diameter of 16 centimeters, the revolutions per second would be less than about 2 billion Otherwise, the peripheral speed would exceed, exceed the speed of light and problems with time and infinite mass would arise according to Einstein's equations. One of Einstein's famous equations shows the faster something goes, the more its mass increases until at the speed of light the mass becomes infinite. By this means the singularity is able to cast off peripheral rings of energy which condense into particulate matter. Simultaneously three-dimensional space is being created 
We are probably talking about fractions of a nanosecond for this transition. The particles in these rings, protons, electrons, and neutrons, and possibly others, eventually form atoms and, in the fullness of time, coagulate under the influence of gravity to form stars and galaxies, traveling initially at high speed from the singularity. Eventually, the gravitational force emanating from the singularity causes them to stop and start returning to the center of the universe where the singularity is still located. The ramifications of this concept are that some of the galaxies may still be outward bound but most have maxed out and are inward bound. The outward bound are traveling at an ever decreasing speed while the inward bound are traveling at an ever increasing speed. Not knowing which way our galaxy is going but observing that most galaxies are receding at an ever increasing rate indicates that we are still on our way out or perhaps have just maxed out and are heading back towards the center. In the Big Bang concept, the universe appears to be expanding, but in the spin concept, it is contracting. Also in this concept, it is not necessary for all of the singularity to be converted into matter, and in fact, most of it is present at the center of the universe. Scientists have estimated that 85% of the matter required to collapse the universe under gravity is missing. The spin concept provides a simple answer to where the missing energy slash matter is located. It is obvious that whether the Big Bang the spin or some other theory is correct, that an underlying primordial event occurred as the cause. The simplest concept is that the singularity had some degree of self-awareness and was able to do a Hamlet-like soliloquy, to be or not to be. Perhaps the singularity was like a newborn infant with no developed intelligence, but with the potential to develop it rapidly. By spinning off some of its energy, it was able to develop awareness of three-dimensional space, particulate matter, and the laws affecting them, besides gravity. It, beca it became aware of the basic laws of probability which, in effect, dictate that if a sufficiently large and complex universe is created, intelligent species can possibly develop. But there will also be a lot of baggage, like viruses, bacteria, and a plethora of diseases. It is logical to conclude that we are literally a part of the singularity. We are a minuscule part of it, but it is all of us. Every part of our bodies, quarks, protons, neutrons, electrons and photons, was created from its primordial energy. One reason for our existence is certainly to continue developing our intelligence and therefore the intelligence of our Creator. It will be evident that the singularity has the power to create another universe by simply increasing its spin rate again, but cannot intervene in the subsequent development of its intelligence because it is subject to the immutable laws of probability just as we are in our everyday lives. 
if you want to continue a discussion on this new concept, email me at the address shown beside me. Spin create at Bell South Bell I'm sorry, spin create at cable one dot net.